Hello, my name is John Broadwell, and I'm a medical device development and embedded systems consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Today, we're going to introduce the Serial Wombat 18AB chip, which is an I.O. expander for I2C and UART. It adds smart expansion capability uh, over I2C or UART to your Arduino, Raspberry Pi, PC, uh, etc. It's available right now on Kickstarter as a Kickstarter campaign and will be available after that on Amazon in a kit that includes uh, a couple of the Serial Wombat 18AB chips and a PCB carrier board and some support components. This video is being released before the uh, shipping of the first Serial Wombat 18AB chips and before the finalization and tagging of the first firmware version. So it's possible that some things from this video may change. Please look in the comments below for any change logs for minor changes that have happened since this video that was published that might be important to you. This video is broken up into a number of different segments. The first segment will be creating a Serial Wombat 18AB module using the PCB boards that come with the chip in the kit. The second module will be uh, using the Serial Wombat 18AB on a breadboard. The third module will be connecting to the Serial Wombat 18AB via a I2C connection from an Arduino. The fourth module will be connecting to the Serial Wombat 18AB through a UART FTDI cable from a PC, and we will build up one of the PCB boards for that purpose. Uh, we will then talk briefly about connecting up via Raspberry Pi over UART, and there'll be just a pointer to another video that I did that talks about that extensively, as well as a pointer to a prior Serial Wombat 4B, which is the f prior product, which uses the same set of libraries uh, that shows you how to install uh, Python support on your Raspberry Pi for that. And finally, we will then show how to create an Internet of Things board and do a simple example using an ESP01 that is connected to the Serial Wombat 18AB carrier board. Again, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. Uh, please watch the entire video through before you send me support requests or questions. Uh, if you need support, the best way to do that is by leaving comments or questions on the YouTube page. Those will get the fastest response. Uh, if you have something that's proprietary or that you feel like you can't share, you can go to SerialWombat.com and use the uh, form to submit a help request from that. Uh, I'll respond from help at SerialWombat.com. That email address has occasionally been known to show up in your spam folder. So if you put in a support request, uh, be sure to check within the next couple of days your spam folder uh, because you may think I didn't respond, it, but in fact, it just went into spam. Let's get started real quick at the pin connections on the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. Let's take a look at this connection diagram, which is the uh, Serial Wombat 18AB chip laid out. There are a number of mandatory components, a 10K to VCC or to 3.3 volt uh, resistor, uh, a 100 nanofarad to ground on this pin, 100 nanofarad to ground on that pin, and a 10 microfarad to ground on this pin. And the Serial Wombat chip comes with a decal, which makes this quite easy. All of these components are mandatory. If you leave them off, the chip may appear to work, but it'll be unstable. It'll be unreliable. So if you want to build something that works over the long term, add all of these components in. They come in the kit. I wouldn't include them in the kit. They cost money. Wouldn't include them if they weren't important. Here we can see the Serial Wombat 18AB kit. Uh, we have our two chips, our two PCBs, uh, four of the header pins. In the case, these are a little bit oversized. We'll have to cut them down. Four 2.2K uh, resistors, four 100 nanofarad capacitors, three 10K resistors, and two uh, 10 microfarad uh, capacitors. The packaging on these may vary in your kit. These may be exactly 15 pins or a little longer, depending on where I source them. And these may either be uh, cut tape or bulk packaged parts. 
uh, but they will be the same and these will always be yellow and these will always be blue. You'll note that we have the decal in here. And so the first thing we're going to do is take out our two serial wombat chips. And we will prep our decal. So for these decals, you have to cut them. And my recommendation on that is one of these Fisker wheels. It works the best. If you don't have one of those, I would recommend an X-Acto knife. If you don't have one of those, I would recommend scissors. It's hard to get the precision you need with scissors. So I did that cut. Pretty happy with that one. Got a little more than I wanted, but not bad. And again, lining that up. Cut. And on these, make sure that you line up the zero pin or the notch uh, with the top of the chip. There's a little dot here and there's a notch here. The zero pin goes here. If you put the decal on upside down, it's likely that you'll have a great deal of trouble in the future because all your connections will be wrong. I recommend using a pair of tweezers to apply these. I find it to be much more accurate than holding the decal in my hand. These are split in half down the back. So we're going to open that like that. And then I am going to, actually this one is upside down. So I'm going to hold it with the tweezers. Get it in just the right position. Get it straight on the chip. Pretty happy with that. And press it down and adhere it. So... Not a perfect application, could have been a little farther to the left, but it will do. And that one went on pretty close to perfectly, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so now next, uh, you have a decision to make. You can either use these directly in a breadboard with the components, or you can solder them to the carrier board. Uh, for this exercise, we will solder them to the carrier board. So the first step is always the same. Uh, subsequent steps vary depending on if you want to use this board for I squared C attached to an Arduino, to connect it up to an FTDI port, or connect it up to an ESP01 module. So there's three use cases for that. These chips are designed to fall nicely into this particular slot. So we'll do that. I recommend doing the chip first. Uh, this is by far the most important thing. Make sure the chip is properly aligned. There's a notch here. And if you note, there's a notch in the top of the board. The zero pin, there is one rounded off corner. The zero pin goes on there. If you make a mistake and you solder it to the wrong side of the board, it's very likely it's very unlikely that you'll be successful in getting it off. So try real hard to get this right the first time. So we'll turn it over and we're just going to solder the chip in place. Now that these are in, we will put in the required components. There is one here marked 10 K. This is one of the places that maybe you might make a mistake. There must be a resistor in this one that's marked 10K. If you look on it in small print, it says required. We're going to use one of the brown, black, orange. And put it in the 10K spot. And that's required for the reset pin of the Serial Wombat chip. We're going to get us one of the 10 microfarad capacitors. And you'll note that that goes in one of the required. And in small text right here, it says blue. And so the blue, resist the blue capacitor 
goes in that set of two holes. And then we need two of the 100 microfarad capacitors. Sorry, 100, 100 uh, nanofarad. And those are both yellow. And we're going to put those in the two holes that are marked yellow. Cool. Now we'll flip this guy over and solder those into place. If you're using the board for I2C, you may want to add your pull-up resistors directly to that board. There's a place for the SDA and SCL pull-up resistors. Those lead to the 3.3 line on the, uh, those lead to the 3.3 line on the PCB board. So since I'm going to be using this for I2C, I'm going to go ahead and add those two resistors. These are 2.2K ohm resistors that come with the kit, and those are red, red, red in color pattern. And I should have done these before I did the first uh, the first header. That was an assembly order error. It'll make my job just slightly harder. Next, we will properly size our headers to the 15-pin connectors. What comes with the kit is uh, is pin connectors, but you can also get socket connectors or stackable connectors uh, that are readily available in a 15-pin format. That's why we picked 15 pins for the Serial Wombat chip, uh, even though that meant duplicating uh, a couple of the power and ground pins, which I always find to be handy when I'm prototyping with wires anyway. So I have my two Headers now. Did I get that right? Yep. Got that all ready to go. And you have a decision to make now. Do you want them pointing down? Do you want them pointing up? Are you going to stick them into a breadboard? Uh, a lot of them, I make them flat so that they stick up. And But in this case, let's go ahead and stick them down. Now, one of the challenges of these is getting them in parallel. For your first board, I would recommend using the second board as an alignment tool. To help get them nice and parallel, I'm going to sandwich them like that, set it down carefully. So now the uh, now the pins are sitting in the second board, which keeps them pretty close to parallel and straight up. And then these are a simple job. Anybody can do the soldering on these. And there we go. We have a board that is ready to be talked to via I2C and an external power supply. Uh, the other thing that I often enjoy doing that I think makes my life easier and less likely that I will make mistakes is I will go through and mark the pins with a acrylic paint marker. So this five volt ground, ground and red. So I mark the I mark the five uh, the three point three volts on my board's red. If I have a white header, 
I mark the ground pins black. If I have a black header, I mark the ground pins white. So we got two ground pins there. And actually, I only marked one of the 3.3. So we got two ground pins. I need to go back and mark that other red one. And then 5 volt, I mark with orange. That's just my own personal color scheme. And then I will go back and mark the SCL pin with yellow. That matches up with what's used on the quick connectors that are made by SparkFun. And I will mark the data pin with blue. So here we see a simple test setup that we're going to use. And we're using an ESP32 uh, Node 32S board. And we've just connected up the I squared C clock and data and 3.3 volts and 5 volts. The node is providing power and ground as well as serving as the I2C controller to the Serial Wombat 18AB board. So let's use the Wombat Finder application and see how that works. Now, one of the most important things to do is to get the Arduino library, which is the latest library which supports the Serial Wombat chip. So to do that, you go to Tools, Manage Libraries, and in here, just type the word Wombat. and you'll find the Serial Wombat library and install the latest version. Along with this, you'll want to make sure that you have the latest firmware for your Serial Wombat 18AB chip. Uh, and to check that, when you run the Serial Wombat chip finder, which is shown later in this video, uh, it will check to see if the firmware version is the latest available, assuming that you have the latest Arduino library that's available. So that's how you install the library. A video for how to upgrade the firmware on your Serial Wombat 18AB chip through UART or I squared C is in the links below or above me. So let's go to File, Examples, Serial Wombat, Serial Wombat Chip Finder, and Sketch Upload. And we will open the Serial Monitor while we're doing that. And here we see it found its Serial Wombat chip at 0x6b, which is the default address if you leave the address pin unconnected. So that setup is working very good for us. If you prefer, you can use the surface mount component mounts on the back. Surface mount components are not included with the kit. Uh, you'll note that there are equivalent pads for all of the through-hole components. Uh, that are marked with the same marker with an S on the end. So here's R1S, that'll be our 10K. C1S, that'll be one of the 100 nanofarads. C2S, that'll be a 100 nanofarad. And C3S, that is a 10 microfarad capacitor. Uh, all of the pads are 0603, except for the 10 microfarad, which is an 0805, uh, to, because those are often easier to find in large capacitances. I would recommend uh, adding the surface mount components before soldering the chip in. There are also these two uh, resistor pads for pull-up resistors. I'll put 2200 ohm resistors on those. We are going to be using, uh, for this board, this is going to be one that connects up via an FTDI cable, which will also provide 5 volts coming into the board. And so we're going to add a SOT23-3 voltage regulator that will take the 5 volts provided by that and step it down to the 3.3 volts required by the uh, Serial Wombat chip. The Serial Wombat chip has a number of pins that are 5 volt tolerant, and one of those is used for the 
UART RX pin, and that will run to the TX pin from the FTDI cable, which allows us to use either a 5 volt or a 3.3 volt FIDI cable with the Serial Wombat chip. Once we have all the surface mount parts in place, we'll flip the board over and drop the Serial Wombat chip into the board. Again, it is critically important that the notch line up with the notch on the top of the board that pin zero lines up with the curved section of the board which should be on the left side. So these chips have been run through a pin straightener to make them go in easily. We'll flip that over and we will solder that together. Okay so here's the completed FTDI UART based board and I'm going to go ahead and put a jumper across the address short pins up here that will put this chip into UART mode when we power it up. So it's pretty straightforward. From here, we will just take our FTDI cable. Uh, note that there is a black ground and also an arrow on one of the pins. That goes, if you notice the FTDI socket, there is an arrow on one end, that is the ground end. This assumes a fairly standard FTDI cable setup, uh, similar to the ones sold by SparkFun and others but you should definitely check to make sure that the pinout of your FTDI cable or other serial to USB cable matches the pin inward that is used on the Serial Wombat Carrier PCB. Let's plug this guy in and see how we can talk to it directly through a terminal. So here we have <clears throat> the chip now connected via FTDI up to my computer and I have my Salier uh, logic analyzer connected up to Wombat pin 0, Wombat pin 1, 2, and Wombat pin 3, plus uh, Wombat pins 7 and 9, which are the UART RX and TX lines. I'm sorry, TX and RX. So let's take a look and talk to the serial Wombat directly and make those pins wiggle. Okay, so let's uh, launch this. Uh, you will Note down below, and this is still on my to-do list, but down below there will be a link to a GitHub Docs page uh, that explains the protocol of the Serial Wombat chip. Essentially, it's eight bytes in, eight bytes out every single time. And I designed the protocol so that a subset of the commands deal exclusively in ASCII. Most of the stuff that the Arduino library does or the Python do library does or whatever, those are all binary for efficiency and, you know, to get the job done with as little, little work as possible. But some of the stuff is designed from really going back to the original serial Wombat of, you know, 2005 that's designed so that a human can actually manipulate it directly. So I'm going to go in and say new connection. I'm using TerraTerm here. Uh, we're going to connect up on COM98, that's connected to my FTDI cable, and that is connected at 115,200. So again, 8 bytes in, 8 bytes out. Uh, part of the thing about the protocol is it ignores uh, space, a capital U, or a lowercase x as the beginning of any packet. So that's how you can resync without packetization. Uh, this scheme is a little less robust than the I squared C, which has good uh, packet begin and end, but I found it to be still you know, quite reliable, quite useful. So just to make sure that I'm synced, I'm gonna hit eight, space eight times. Now I should be absolutely ready for a new packet if I wasn't before. So I'm gonna type a capital V and seven more spaces. And hey, we're connected up to the Serial Wombat 18AB. V is for the v version command. S says I'm a Serial Wombat chip. 18 is my model. A means I'm connected up over UART. And 205 is the firmware version that I'm getting ready to finalize, hopefully, uh, here shortly in TAG in GitHub. So that's very, that's very, very cool. So let's go ahead and start up the logic analyzer and I have these connected up to Wombat pins 0 through 3 and then the asynchronous uh, transmit and receive the UARTs uh, with a decoder. So again if I say V 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 we get a response and you can see that the uh, that the logic analyzer picked that up and 
sent that back. So, you know, if we wanted to, we could go back and look at it. And, hey, my manually entered uh, numbers are very far apart. The uh, serial wombat then burped out a response that was eight bytes long uh, very, very quickly. So that's moderately interesting. You know, it's fun. It's a good uh, hello world, kind of. Let's check the version. Uh, more interesting, though, are the various pin commands. Uh, these are designed so that you can directly access your Serial Wombat chip and make it do some f fun things, like if you wanted to turn on a uh, 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 an LED or something like that. And so you can see the protocol here. This is Markdown language. This will be in the in the Markdown that I provide a link to. And so I'm going to go into my terminal. And again, I'll hit, hit space eight times. That way I know I'm ready to start a new packet. Uh, let's make uh, P00 uh, H for high and then one, two, three, four. And so that, that last four spaces completed the packet. And you can see that pin zero went high. Uh, let's make it go low again. P00 lowercase l, one, two, three, four. And it went low again. And you can, you can tie these together. Uh, if I say P00 low, then I put an H for high, that'll set pin zero low and pin one, the next pin in the sequence high. So I hit space three times to complete the packet and that went high. And I got some, oh, this guy is, is probably picking up noise because he's set to an input right now. So let's, uh, let's P zero two low one, two, three, four. And okay. That's now it's not floating. We're not getting, getting that garbage. Uh, you could do some other interesting things too. Uh, let's say P zero zero W one, two, three, four. That should put the pin in, in, uh, PWM mode. Now, in order to, uh, to drive it to a PWM, you have to set the public data for that pin. And the command for that is lowercase d. So we're going to say d zero zero. And then we're going to put in the public data in uh, ASCII. So if we wanted it to be a 50% duty cycle, that'd be about 32,000 out of 65,000. So we'll say 32, zero, zero, zero. And OK, there we go. And if we zoom in, we see, hey, we've got a, you know, a default one kilohertz uh, PWM that is running at 50%. So that's cool. So we can go ahead and put that pin back. Uh, P00 low, one, two, three, four. And now it's in low mode. Uh, we could use it to drive a servo if we wanted to. Uh, so let's say P00S, one, two, three, four. And what do we see here? We see the very standard servo uh, output 20 uh, milliseconds apart with a 500 microsecond uh, pulse. And that ranges by default from 500 microseconds to 2500. So now let's go in and we will again set the public data to 32,000, which will set it about in the middle of the range. That should give us a pulse of about one and a half milliseconds. So uh, data 00, 32, 1, 2, 3, 4. And lo and behold, what do we get? Uh, exactly what, what we predicted. One and a half, it's a little less because 50% is actually 32,768. Uh, so 1.478 milliseconds and running uh, about 22 milliseconds apart. So there we go. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, another thing that we can do is there will be a forthcoming application that's designed to let you play with your Serial Wombat chip uh, using binary over UART, which is called the Wombat Panel. This, again, is a throwback to something that I released in 2005 for the original project. Uh, some of my people from Dayton uh, who met me at the Hamvention and bought it there actually, you know, 15, 18 years ago have reached out and said, hey, is there going to be a new Serial Wombat Panel? And the answer is yes. Let's take a look at that.
and I need to close this because we'll be using that same uh, that same port. So here's our serial, and you can see this is still kind of kind of uh, uh, quick and dirty. It says form one. It doesn't have a good uh, a good uh, title and all that. So, but we'll come in here and we'll pick COM98 again. And it's going to do a, a variety of resyncing. We had some bad characters here. Okay. Resync COM one more time. That looks good. I, these are, it's echoing out some, some data that we want. So at this point, uh, we can come over here on the graphic user interface. This part over here is mostly for me. Uh, it lets me, while I'm prototyping and testing things, send arbitrary packets to the Serial Wombat chip. Most of you guys are going to be working behind libraries, so you're probably not that interested in here. So, But we can go over here and say, okay, right-click on this. We're going to take pin 0, and we're going to make it a PWM. We're going to configure it with a period of 500 microseconds. Configure. And that should be a PWM now. So let's let's pull up the uh, and we're at zero PWM. So there's no drive there. If I take this guy and I drag it, we get uh, get a different uh, different duty cycle. So again, we'll pause that. Uh, what do we leave it at last time? Uh, Thirty five, uh, which is a 53.9 percent duty cycle. We come in here, and okay, it is 500, uh, uh, 500 uh, microseconds, and something's off a little bit. Okay, so I had to hit the set PWM. Normally, it updates automatically, but something's off with my Windows thing. So 63.3% duty cycle, and very, very, very close. Uh, with, again, a 500 microsecond uh, 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 period. So anyway, this should be a, a really useful, interesting uh, uh, toy for you guys to play with. It is Windows only. It runs on Windows form. The .NET Core library underneath the Talks to the Serial Wombat can be ported to Linux or any, any uh, uh, platform that can run .NET Core, but the high-level GUI runs on Windows. Sorry. Sorry, people on other platforms. So, and it is .NET Windows form for .NET Core, so it won't run on mono. Uh, if somebody else wants to port it to something else, you are welcome to be my guest. Uh, and there's all kinds of other interesting things you can do here. We can read over the, uh, over, we can see the public data of various pins and other data sources as well. So like, for instance, we could take a look and say, oh, okay, what is our VCC right now in millivolts? Let's set that up to auto sample. And okay, we're seeing this is what the Serial Wombat chip is measuring its VN as, uh, 3.1 volts. That's kind of cool. Uh, what else do we got? We've got the uh, temperature using the internal temperature sensor. And that's reading about 37 degrees. If that was true, you'd be seeing me sweating like crazy. This is a Serial Wombat black label chip, which means it doesn't go through any extra calibration. So the temperature sensor is pretty bad. On the Serial Wombat red labels, I calibrate the internal voltage source, the current source, and a one-point uh, shift calibration on the temperature sensor. So it should be much, much better. And those chips cost a few bucks more because I run it through that extra process. Not every chip can pass that set of criteria. So anyway, there's a quick look at what you can do over UART and a teaser for a forthcoming uh, tool that I hope everybody will be excited about. The Serial Wombat also has support code for in Python for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's a rather extensive discussion of how to get that running and some examples. So a whole separate uh, video has been created. And if you look up above, you'll see a card that takes you to one of two separate libraries. If you look in the links in the in the description below this video, uh, you'll find two, vi two uh, videos that talk about using I squared C or Python to talk to your serial Wombat chips on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's do an example now of using your Serial Wombat chip in a breadboard. I'm going to take my Serial Wombat chip. I like to align it with pin this pin on pin number 11 just because it helps me count sometimes. And I'm going to put it in there carefully. 
and put even pressure across it so that I get it to go in there nice and straight without uh, bending any pins. At this point, the setup is relatively straightforward. Each of the various pins is marked as to what needs to go there. So we've got uh, this pin, which is a 10K to plus. You need to put your reading glasses on to be able to read those, but they are nicely marked. Uh, the address pin, let's go ahead and do a 10K to ground on that one. We've been leaving the address pin open all the time for address 0x6b, but just as an example, let's plug it in here. And actually, next pin over. The, let's plug it in here, and that will give us address 0x68. Next is ground. Next is another ground. And finally, the last ground. So we have three grounds. Now we've got two lines that go from uh, VCC to the serial wombat chip. Those are marked with pluses on the decal. And that was easy. And finally, we have uh, a 100 microfarad capacitor to ground and the VCAP pin. This is because the serial wombat chip uses an internal regulator. It needs, uh, that actually runs at 1.8 volts. It needs this capacitor right there to keep that internal regulator stable. So, we got our regulation cap. And then we need these two guys as garden variety power supply bypass capacitors. And one of them is real easy. It just plugs into two pins. We'll put that as close to the chip as possible, just as good practice. And then the other one, which is now stuck to my finger, goes from plus to ground. Finally, uh, for good I squared C practice, we're going to add 2.2K resistors from the clock pin to VCC and from the data pin to VCC. All right. We've got here a Node MCU ESP8266 chip. So we're going to hook up, we're going to supply our system with 3.3 volts from that. Here's our, S, our I squared C clock pin, our I squared C, I'm sorry, data pin, clock pin, and ground. You can see I marked these earlier with my lovely acrylic paint markers. I will plug this in here. Actually, let's put them over here so we're close to the distribution across to the other rail. And here. And data goes, the SDA data goes to the D pin and the clock pin goes here. So now we're ready to power that thing up and run it with our Duino. All right, so now we're going to go up to File, Examples, Serial Wombat Chip, Serial Wombat, uh, Serial Wombat Chip Finder. And we will upload that sketch. And while we're waiting for that to happen, let's take a look. This is the reference card that comes in your kit. And we note that if we have a 10K to ground on the address line, then we expect to see the serial wombat chip using I squared C address 0x68. And it found a chip at 0x68, just as we expected. So that works great. Now, finally, let's hook up two serial wombat chips to the same circuit. I've got the, uh, the carrier board based version that we did earlier. And note that there are already pull-ups on that carrier board. We don't want to have multiple pull-ups. So I'm going to pull out the ones that are on this board. And we will quickly 
hook up the 3.3 volt clock data and ground those up to this board right here to the breadboard So we should see two serial Wombat chips, one at address 0x6b, because it has no address resistor in the uh, address area, and one at 0x68, because it has 10k to ground. Okay, and the serial Wombat chip finder found one at 0x68 and zero one one at 0x6b, just as we expected. You can see uh, a lot of difference on the temperature sensor across the two. The, uh, the source voltage measurement's pretty good, and there may be just a very slight amount of variation over the wire, who knows. But, uh, and we can see that microchip's unique IDs uh, vary by the chip. Who knows what format they use for these, but they are unique, so they tell us. So anyway, we can see two serial Wombat chips that potentially could be working together in the same circuit by setting the address pin. Okay, so let's take a look at the Serial Wombat Carrier PC configured as an IoT board. Uh, on the back here, I have populated the 10K pull-up resistor on the reset line, uh, the three mandatory uh, capacitors, pull-up resistors for the SDA and SCL line, and a 5 volt to 3.3 volt LDO, along with two 1 microfarad bypass caps or stability caps that are required for that LDO per its data sheet. On the front side, it is our standard serial Wombat chip. And on this case, I used right angle headers. I think I'm going to start using these more often. They look nice for the, uh, for the demos. And we have a 100 mil spaced uh, 2 by 4 socket and a 100 mil spaced 1x4 socket. And those sockets are what make it an IoT board. We have here an ESP8266 ESP01 board and uh, one of the ubiquitous 64x128 uh, OLED displays uh, that is that plugs in via I2C. This display will be driven directly from the Arduino-based ESP01, not the Serial Wombat uh, chip. It's all on the same I2C bus. So, but I, I use these a lot, and I find them to be useful. So that's why I put a socket that was pin compatible with this on the Serial Wombat PCB. So this guy, the Serial Wombat uh, PCB board does not have the ability to program in circuit the ESP01 board. And so what we will do is first we will plug that in to the PC in this programming board that I got on one of the electronic flea markets. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, IoT sketch. We're going to go to File, Examples, Serial Wombat, Serial Wombat 18AB, Serial Wombat 18B IoT Example. And this is designed to run on an ESP01 module. So we'll go to Tools, Board, Generic ESP8266, and Port, COM3, that's excellent. And my board has, happens to be a D-out compatible board. Uh, they vary. So let's do a sketch upload on that. And while that's running, we'll talk about the sketch. So we include serialwombat.h. My Wi-Fi.h is a file that I put d down in one of my libraries that has my uh, Wi-Fi uh, network and password in it so that it does these pound defines. You can either comment those out and fill them in directly here as strings, or I would recommend doing the same thing. I, th I find it to be very helpful with my sketches. Uh, so, and we're going to pull in a variety of 
ESP8266 and network clients that will support us uh, doing both over-the-air updates. There's a second tab here that uh, that does the OTA stuff and one that and some of these libraries that will help us with a web server and the OTA stuff and the web server are pretty much straight from the ESP8266 uh, examples with a bunch of stuff cut out to make this uh, seem simpler. So if you're doing that sort of thing, I'd recommend going to the examples. We're going to instantiate a serial Wombat chip. Uh, we're going to create a web server and we'll pull in a couple of files to uh, drive a the LCD, I'm sorry, the OLED display. We're going to do wire begin and we're going to give it the SDA and SCL lines for the ESP01 board. Those are two and zero. You have to use this wire begin if you're using the Serial Wombat PCB in IoT mode connected up to the ESP01 board. Uh, we will call begin on the Serial Wombat chip. There is no address uh, resistor in place, so it defaults to address 0x6b. We'll initialize the display. We'll initialize the OTA, the over-the-air over the update, which in that uh, setup is also where I uh, connect to the Wi-Fi network and all that kind of stuff. You can look at that code if you want to. Uh, we'll begin a, an M NDS service so that we can refer to this, uh, this IoT device as Serial Wombat Temp Sensor for temperature. And we'll register just a single handler that uh, handles the root of that web server. And then we'll start up the server. And then we just go into a loop and we will deal with OTA, we'll deal with the server and the MDNS. And then we will periodically clear the display. We'll write out our IP address just in case we want to see that. And then we'll take 100 samples of the temperature sensor on the Serial Wombat chip. Uh, we'll divide that by 100 to get an average. And then we'll dump that out to the display. And this handle root that we registered for the server, uh, when we do that, it, if we go to that particular web address, then we will see that it dumps out the temperature over the web. So pretty straightforward. So that download just ran and it is running on the uh, chip right now. So that also means the OTA service is running. So let's go over and let's hook up the, uh, let's move the chip into the Serial Wombat PCB. So we're gonna unplug this guy right here. We will take our ESP01 module, which has been programmed with our code and plug it in here. We are going to hook up the black to one of the ground lines on the side. I've got this USB uh, adapter and we will plug the five volt into the bottom. That five volt will travel into the board. It'll be converted by this little LDO into 3.3 volts that then will be used to control the rest of the circuits. It's important to note that the 3.3 volt, you know, this, this chip can pull you know, over 100 milliamps. So it's important when you pick a, an LDO to put on the back of that, you're cognizant of how much current you're going to be driving through it. The 250 that I've got on there now is plenty to drive this stuff, but it's not enough to drive this plus this plus dump a bunch of current out a bunch of the bunch of the IO pins from the Serial Wombat chip. That would overload it and I'd likely to get, I'd likely get droop over time. So we'll plug that in. That looks good. Okay, I, IoT example, IP unset, it hasn't done it yet. Okay, it's powered up, and we can see it's measuring temperature. Again, this is a black chip, so it's not been calibrated. You can make the temperature much better with the calibration. The red chips uh, do that. Again, we don't guarantee because it's you know it's four diodes inside the die. They're not they're not accurate like a like a dedicated chip, but it can be much better with the calibration. We can see it got on my home network 192-168-1.248. So is it actually measuring temperature? Let's see. We will take here some cleaning dust. You spray this stuff upside down, it'll act like a coolant. So we'll just hit the chip with that. Yep, that was more than I wanted. But we can see that we get a massive uh, drop of about 15 degrees right off the bat of uh, Celsius reading. So, and then if I put my finger on here, it'll give back a lot of that temperature and we'll see it's 
climbing. So let's take a look real quick at the web server. So we can go from here, we can go to HTTP, and I've been here before, Serial Wombat Temp Sensor. That's the MDNS servers that we created, and we're getting 45.11 degrees. Again, you know, not accurate, uh, but it could be calibrated to be so. The other fun thing that this opens up for us is that we now can connect up via OTA. You can see that this ESP8266 showed up at that IP address, and we can do a sketch upload. And what we'll see is that it's going to compile the sketch, and it will upload it uh, over the air. And is uploading. Done uploading. Upload is complete. So we can go over here, and it'll be doing a reset now. We'll give it just a couple of... Uh, seconds to reset to connect up to my home network and to get its services started and then at that point we'll hit it up is it ready yes so that code now is running and giving us new uh new values and so you can see even though we can't program via serial directly in the serial wombat pcb uh, we can program over the air once we put the ota code into the chip once so that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. All the normal caveats apply about uh, putting uh, a chip that will let you run unvalidated network code on your home network, obviously. That's been discussed a lot, but it's something that should be considered. Uh, so that's it for the IoT example. Well, we've reached the end of the longest Serial Wombat tutorial video to date. Again, I'd like to thank you for choosing the Serial Wombat chip to use in your electronics project. I really respect the time that you put into your projects. I hope that you'll find that the amount of effort that I've put into this chip is worthy of your effort to integrate it into your project. Uh, as before, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Uh, right now, as I create this video, it's available on Kickstarter. Uh, if that's ended, go to SerialWombat.com and you can find out how to purchase them from there on Amazon or hopefully eventually other outlets as well. So uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much again for all of your support. It's been really exciting working with you. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.